So if I haven't explained it to you yet, why the elaborate system for raising brine shrimp, let me do so. First of all, I, first of all, brine shrimp, Artemia, um, is a unique little animal. They can go into hibernation. Um, their eggs, or they are with inside an egg that will basically dry up and let the wind blow it around. Uh, and at some point when it rains and that egg ends up in a puddle of water, it'll actually hatch. And of course that little brine shrimp's next challenge is to break free the egg, uh, reproduce, and then die. In the aquarium business, the appeal uh, to live baby brine shrimp is to a certain degree, it's ease in producing, uh, but mostly its particular size and at a certain stage, uh, its nutritional value. <clears throat> if you think of a, a, a brine shrimp, a baby brine shrimp, as uh, uh, living inside a, a, a shell of sorts, uh, he needs to be rehydrated, placed in water so that that shell softens and somehow that stimulates him to magically come back to life and from there he needs to break free of that shell. So if you're successful in, 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 in uh, raising or bringing those brine shrimps back to life, you will end up with a live baby brine shrimp uh, who has a little yolk sac attached to him and that's what he's going to feed on for the next 12 hours or so. Uh, once he consumes that little yolk sac, uh, he's just no significant nutritional value other than protein, but while he's got that yolk sac on him, uh, that's very nutritious. Um, so what you have is this baby brine shrimp that has freed himself from the shell, and then you have the, the shell, the empty shell, the husk. And for me, in the jellyfish raising business, uh, I had to learn the hard way, meaning I was not making an attempt to separate the shells from the, the uh, baby brine shrimp and as you dispense that into the tank with all those ephyra or juvenile jellyfish, 50% uh, of what they were consuming was shells, which is really not a good thing. Uh, the other problem with the shells is a lot of them will float at the surface, a lot of them will collect at the bottom, so it gives a very dirty tank uh, and every time you go in to, to break the surface and go in to do something, you stir up those shells which spin around in the system again. Uh, additionally, it, 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 I found that, that, that too much debris sitting at the bottom of the tank created an um, environment that was not appropriate for uh, raising jellyfish. And at one point I had a little ephyra tank of probably 400 little jellies going and within two days they just all disappeared. Uh, and the only thing that was left was this big old pile of debris sitting at the bottom. And I'm sure that that had uh, encouraged uh, some type of uh, bad environment that just was, again, uh, not beneficial to the jellyfish. Uh, and so they ended up being parasitized or, or whatever. They just didn't make it. So the, the, the point of this part of the episode is to give you an idea not only how I would make the brine shrimp, but how to separate the shells from the, the freshly hatched brine shrimp. Uh, and there are two methods that I know of. One is we'll call a chemical means, uh, which you essentially would take those uh, brine shrimps in their shell and place them in uh, uh, bleach. Uh, and you would leave them in there for a certain period of time and essentially the bleach would dissolve the shell and you would be able to monitor this because you would see these different color changes going from a brown, which is the color of the shell, to a silver, which is the shell dissolving, uh, to an orange, which is the brine shrimp himself, minus the shell. Uh, and that thinks, I think that takes about 11 or 13 minutes to occur. You're supposed to be stirring it during that period of time because there is a, a chemical reaction that occurs uh, and heat being the byproduct of that could cook your baby brine shrimp. The alternative, which is the system that I have set up here with the uh, dual and ultimately triple cones, and the basic idea is you hatch those out so that the shells and the eggs are separated and floating in the same environment, uh, but then you shut down the aeration aspect, um, which to a certain degree allows most of the shells to rise and 
sit at the surface. Some of them will settle down to the bottom. Uh, and if you shine a light inside there, uh, and I have to admit I was a little disappointed in this end of it, but if you shine a light in there, uh, the brine is kind of attracted to it. And so essentially you end up with a lot of dead stuff at the bottom, all the shells at the surface, and all that live brine shrimp in the middle. Uh, you can then easily open the valve at the bottom uh, and siphon off or draw off the, the, the debris and close it quickly, discard that. And then as you were to open the valve and allow that water to drain out of the cone through the bottom, as it drains down, the bulk of the shells will then begin to adhere to the sides or the surface, uh, of the interior surface of the cone as that water level drops. So that's the basic idea. I'm going to show you how I'm making live brine shrimp here. So we started out with a five gallon bucket. I use 50% fresh water and 50% salt water. Some people might use 100% salt water and rock salt. Uh, some might use 100% real ocean water. Uh, I like a 50-50 blend. And so that's what we've got right here. We're now going to go put that into the first hatchery. So here's the basic idea. We have a tall, narrow, tapered vessel. We're going to introduce our water into this vessel or hatchery, and in turn, we're going to aerate that water. The aeration will come from a rigid airline and an air pump that we've suspended above the hatchery itself. We'll dangle that airline down into the hatchery so that the bubble end of it is at the bottom of the hatchery. Those air bubbles, which will percolate from the bottom to the top, will cause a movement of water moving from the bottom to the top of the vessel. This is what's going to create the circulation within the system. Once that water is blended, we're then going to take and introduce our brine shrimp eggs directly into the hatchery itself. There are many sources for brine shrimp eggs, ranging from your local tropical fish store to off the internet. There's also a wide range of quality as well as pricing, so be sure to shop around and don't be afraid to try different brands to get a different perspective on the quality or the cost savings of the brine shrimp eggs themselves. The brine shrimp eggs will still need to be hydrated, so a number of them will float at the surface until they become saturated with water. At that point, the flow of water within the hatchery vessel will begin to circulate them from the bottom to the top. During this process, the brine shrimp egg shell will begin to soften and will at some point begin to actually dissolve, allowing the brine shrimp inside, who has been in a form of suspended animation, actually begin to come back to life. At some point between 16 and 48 hours, the brine shrimp who has become rejuvenated will break free of his cyst or shell that he's been contained within. There will now be two items in the hatchery, the live brine carrying his egg yolk sac as well as his spent empty shell. Come on back for part three, we'll discuss how to actually separate the two of those so they don't go in the system as one. 